Proverbs 14 verses 1 to 35, Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways dispiseth him. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. A scorner seeketh wisdom, and findeth it not, but knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. Go from the presence of a foolish man, when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool raggeth and is confident. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The evil bow before the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. The poor is hated even of his own neighbor, but the rich hath many friends. He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth, but he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. Do they not err that devise evil? But mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. The crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolishness of fools is folly. A true witness delivereth souls, but a deceitful witness speaketh lies. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, to depart from the snares of death. In the multitude of people is the king's honor, but in the want of people is the destruction of the prince. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his maker, but he that honoreth him hath mercy on the poor. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous hath hope in his death. Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding but that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causeth shame. Opening Sentence Proverbs 14 verse 1 Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Finding the theme, labor and the inner man. This chapter begins with a wise woman laboring to build her house, and it ends with a king reigning in wisdom. Both laborers are servants of the Lord. The house being built is the inner man, as noted by frequent references to the word heart. Proverbs 14 verses 10 and 13. 14 30 33. The inner man is being edified by receiving and believing God's word. Both the wise and the foolish women of this chapter are laboring. The foolish woman refused to build according to God's instructions, therefore her labor ended in self-destruction. The overarching theme of the book of Proverbs, The Two Ways, continues to develop in chapter 14 with comparisons between two types of servants and the paths they choose to walk. The Fear of the Lord The path to wisdom always begins with the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 14 verses 2 to 3 He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Holy awe and reverence of God will motivate the servant of God to obedience. He will walk uprightly and labor according to the word of God, 
that he has received into his inner man. The word in his heart will generate a work in his body. In contrast, the proud and foolish servant wasted his time speaking and laboring contrary to the wisdom of God. Much increase. Proverbs 14 verse 4 Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the oxen. Feeding and caring for oxen requires much labor, but the oxen can plow large plot of land which will yield much fruit. Similarly, laboring in the word of God is weariness to the flesh, Ecclesiastes 12 verse 12, but it will yield the fruit of righteousness. Psalm 107 verses 36 to 37, And there he mocketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation, and sow the fields and plant vineyards, which may yield fruits of increase. Proverbs 12:12, 12, 12, The wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. Faithful Words Proverbs 14 verse 5 A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. God hates a false witness. Proverbs 6 verses 16 to 19 The law of Moses carried steep penalties for bearing false witness. Deuteronomy 19 verses 15 to 21 A foolish servant will lie to himself and to others for selfish reasons, which includes making excuses to avoid physical labor. Proverbs 22.13 The slothful man saith, There is a lion without, I shall be slain in the streets. Labor to seek wisdom. Proverbs 14 verse 6 A scorner seeketh wisdom, and findeth it not, but knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. A scorner is one who despises God's word. When a scorner labors for wisdom, he cannot find it because he has already rejected its only source. A wise servant understands that wisdom comes from God, so it is easy for him to find it. Depart from a fool. A fool is easy to spot because the words of his mouth reveal what is in his heart. There is no benefit to keep company with the fool. Proverbs 14 verse 7 Go from the presence of a foolish man, when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. Verse 7 is the first verse in section 2 of Proverbs, where an implied subject of you is found. You go from the presence of a foolish man. God is training his son through Proverbs to become a ruler over the nation of Israel. The focus of the Proverbs will change, beginning in chapter 16, from that of teaching general principles regarding good versus evil to instructing the king of the nation. Mock at sin. Proverbs 14 verses 8 to 9 The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. A prudent servant labors to understand God's way, and he wisely ponders his choices. Proverbs 4 verse 26 A fool chooses to believe convenient falsehoods and will not take sin seriously. The inner man Proverbs 14 verse 10 The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. What is in the heart of a man, whether wickedness or righteousness, can only be known to himself and to God. However, even a stranger can know what is in a man's heart after he hears him speak. It is possible for a man to hide bitterness or joy in his heart while he speaks and behaves contrary to the truth. The Building Proverbs 14 verse 11 The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. A house is a permanent structure, whereas a tabernacle or a tent is temporary. The wicked servant labors to build houses and conquer lands, which he then names after himself, Psalms 49 verse 11, in a vain attempt to have his name long remembered. A wise servant realizes that he will carry nothing with him at the end of his life. Job 1 verse 21. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 15. 1 Timothy 6 verse 7. Therefore he is content to dwell in the temporary structure and spend his life laboring to understand the wisdom and knowledge of God. A way which seems right. Proverbs 14 verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death. The right way was made clear by the instructions that God gave to the nation of Israel in the law of Moses. 
The servant can choose to either follow God's instructions or to follow the counsel of his own wicked heart. Proverbs 12 verse 15 The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. The heart. Proverbs 14 verses 13 to 14 Even in laughter the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. God knows the true condition of his son's heart. Laughter and mirth can be an outward disguise for the heart's true condition. A backslider in heart has rejected God's instructions and will suffer for it. The simple versus the prudent. Proverbs 14 verses 15 to 19 The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool raggeth and is confident. He that is soon angry delleth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The evil bow before the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. Being called simple is not a compliment. A servant who believes every word is one who has no discernment between good and evil. Believing every word is dangerous because false doctrine is disguised as truth and spoken by deceivers. A foolish servant will ignore godly counsel and plunge forward into danger. A foolish servant is quick to anger, often due to having confidence in his own folly. The Lord hates a man of wicked devices, and he will give the good and prudent man authority over that wicked servant. Psalm 11 verse 5 The Lord trieth the righteous. But the wicked in him that loveth violence his soul hateth. The poor. Proverbs 14 verses 20 to 22 The poor is hated even of his own neighbor, but the rich hath many friends. He that despiseth his neighbor sinneth, but he that hath mercy on the poor, happy is he. Do they not err that devise evil? But mercy and truth shall be to them that devise good. Jesus taught his disciples that they would have the poor with them always. As the law also stated in Deuteronomy 15 verse 11, God made provision for the poor in the law of Moses, Exodus 23 verse 11, Leviticus 19 verse 10, because widows and orphans were often left destitute. God desired his servants to show mercy to their poor brethren, but often the poor were neglected and despised. A servant can labor to devise either good or evil but God will show mercy to the servant who is merciful to his poor neighbor. God will reject the servant who despises the poor. Talk is cheap. Proverbs 14 verses 23 to 24 In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. The crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolishness of fools is folly. Both physical and spiritual labor is profitable but a man who talks more than he works usually ends up in poverty. A wise servant labors both physically and spiritually, and he will be rewarded with a crown of riches. The greatest wealth to possess is the wisdom and knowledge of God. Deliver souls. Proverbs 14 verse 25 A true witness delivereth souls, but a deceitful witness speaketh lies. In a court case, False witnesses could cause the innocent to be wrongfully put to death. This was the case with Naboth in 1 Kings chapter 21, and which Jesus in Matthew 26 verses 59 to 61 and Mark 14 verses 55 to 59. A true witness has the power to deliver souls who are condemned to death. Proverbs 24 12 If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? A place of refuge. Proverbs 14 verses 26 to 28 In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, to depart from the snares of death. In the multitude of people is the king's honor, but in the one of people is the destruction of the prince. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Throughout the book of Proverbs, God is teaching his son to be wise, so that he can reign as a righteous king over his people.
By upholding God's law, the king is able to keep the nation safe. If the king fails to uphold God's law, the people will be destroyed. Hasty spirit or sound heart. Proverbs 14 verses 29 to 30 He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. The wise son who has wisdom hidden in his inner man will not speak or act in a hasty manner because he is not relying on his own understanding for making decisions. Just as a defective physical heart can corrupt the life of the physical flesh, an unsound inner man will cause corruption in a man's behavior. The book of Proverbs repeatedly warns against envying sinners. Envy resides in the heart and leads to destruction of the flesh. Proverbs 3 verse 31, 23 17. Honor the poor. Proverbs 14 verses 31 to 32 He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his Maker, but he that honoureth him hath mercy on the poor. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous hath hope in his death. The poor has been the topic of three verses in chapter 14, all of which teach the Son to have mercy on the poor. There will come a time in Israel's history that many will become poor because they refuse to worship any but the God of Israel. Many will die for their faith, but God promises that there is hope in their death. Rest and Righteousness Proverbs 14 verses 33 to 34 Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding, but that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. God's servant will labor in the way of righteousness when God's word resides in his heart. A wise king who rules in righteousness will cause his nation to be held in high esteem. A wicked king will bring shame upon himself and his nation because of their sin. Isaiah 32, 1 Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. Conclusion Proverbs 14, verse 35 The king's favor is toward a wise servant but his wrath is against him that causeth shame. This chapter concludes with God's servant and son, who is now a king reigning in wisdom over his righteous servants. The word king is used two times in this chapter, verses 28 and 35, which is the first time the word has been mentioned in this section of Proverbs. From this point forward, a king will be referenced numerous times. God's Son has been instructed in the way of righteousness and should now be able to reign over the nation in righteousness. Summary Proverbs chapter 14 considers two laborers walking in their chosen path. The two paths lead to two houses, the house of the wise and the house of the foolish. The servant must choose to believe and follow the instructions of God, or else despise and reject them. The doctrine that resides in the heart of each servant will be revealed by their speech and their labor. Appropriate rewards are received at the end of their journey, destruction, poverty and death to the foolish servant, or favor, riches and life to the wise. Dispensational Consideration The nation of Israel was under a performance-based law, which required much labor. Israel willingly entered into this covenant agreement, Exodus 19 verse 8. If they believed what God said, they would by faith obey Him, and in doing so they would be blessed. Believers today live under the dispensation of grace of God that was given to the Apostle Paul, specifically for the Gentiles, Ephesians 3 verses 1 to 7. The church, which is His body, is the building made by God wherein dwells the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 3 verses 9 and 16. Believers cannot labor for their salvation. Jesus Christ already completed the work of salvation on the cross when he gave his life as a ransom to pay for all mankind's sins. However, those who have trusted in Christ's work can now labor with God to see all men saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2 verses 3 to 4 This can only be accomplished by learning the doctrine taught by the Apostle Paul in Romans through Philemon by giving the gospel message to the lost and by teaching doctrine to those who are saved. Reading, studying, and understanding the word of God accomplishes the work of God in the inner man of each believer. Ephesians 3 verse 16
Allowing the Word to do the work will yield the fruit of the Spirit in a believer's life. Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23. The future hope of the believer is righteousness, peace and joy. Romans 14 verse 17. In the presence of the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 19. In heavenly places. Ephesians 2 verse 6. For all eternity. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 16 to 17. Life Application. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom in all dispensations. Ignoring God or pretending he does not exist is very unwise. The Apostle Paul instructs believers today to be simple concerning evil and wise unto that which is good. Romans 16 verse 19. The wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 19. Believers would do well to become a fool for Christ's sake with the Apostle Paul as their example. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 10. Scripture calls those living under dispensation of grace foolish when they put themselves back under those dispensation of law in an attempt to be made righteous. Galatians 3 verses 1 to 3. Just as Israel was instructed to go from the presence of a fool in Proverbs 14, God instructs believers today to Mark and avoid men who teach contrary to the Apostle Paul's doctrine. Romans 16 verse 17. Proverbs 15 verse 24. The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. Chapter 15 pictures Israel's future tribulation when Israel is given a choice to suffer for righteousness sake, or enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Proverbs chapter 14 homework. Concordance search. The words wise and build are found together in the following three verses in the King James Bible. These verses help us understand the superiority and the necessity of the very words of God as a blueprint from which we build today. 2 Chronicles 2 verse 12 King David was a wise son who was given precise instructions by God to build a house for the Lord, which was filled with a cloud of the Lord's glory. 1 Kings 8 verse 11 Dhamma Proverbs 14 colon 1. Every wise woman builds her house by conforming to the exact words of God. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10. The Apostle Paul was given the specific doctrine to build the body of Christ wherein the Holy Spirit dwells today. Concordance search. Use blue letter Bible to find the phrase, fear of the Lord. It occurs 30 times in the King James Bible. Read through these verses to get a biblical definition. Webster's 1828 Dictionary defines biblical fear as In good men, the fear of God is a holy awe or reverence of God and His laws, which springs from a just view and real love of the divine character, leading the subjects of it to hate and shun everything that can offend such a holy being, and inclining them to aim at perfect obedience. This is filial fear. Concordance search. Find the word witness in the book of Proverbs. Read and consider the distinction made between a true witness and a false witness. Witness is a judicial term for a person who gives a testimony in a court of law. Jesus said to the Pharisees that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. See Matthew 12 verse 36. Note the word heart is found in the book of Proverbs 82 times. That is second only to Psalms in which it is found 130 times. The book of Jeremiah comes in third with 57 occurrences. Remember to consider the inner man while reading through Proverbs chapter 14. It is helpful to highlight the words heart, soul and thoughts, etc. while reading through Proverbs. Read Psalm 49 is a parable about men who waste their lives laboring to be rich. Concordance search type backslid into www.biblegateway.com to find all forms of the word in a King James Bible. This includes backslider and backslidings. Note that this description only applies to Israel. The term is wrongly applied to believers today. Believers do not backslide. They are saved individuals to who either walk after the flesh or walk after the spirit. Romans 8 verses 1 to 4. Backsliding Israel is referenced extensively in the book of Jeremiah if you wish to study this topic further. Concordance search. Find the word simple in a King James Bible. Read through the results to understand that the word is not often used in a positive sense.
It means unwise, without understanding, lacking discretion or discernment, a fool, and one who is easily deceived. Only the word of God can make wise the simple. Read Matthew 26, verse 11, Mark 14, verse 7, and John 12, verse 8, which refer back to the law of Moses in Deuteronomy 15, verse 11, regarding the poor of the land of Israel. Concordance Search The word penury is only found two times in the King James Bible. Compare those two references, and then look up the word in Webster's 1828 Dictionary to determine the correct definition. Concordance Search Find Folly in a King James Bible Consider the first five times the word is mentioned, and note that the word is always in reference to grievous and disgusting sins. Folly is no laughing matter. Folly is found in Proverbs more than any other book of the Bible. Ecclesiastes comes in second place. Chapter 14 of Proverbs contains more references to folly than any other chapter of Proverbs. Concordance search. Find the word faithful in the book of Proverbs. Note the characteristics of a son a servant who is faithful. Concordance search. By using www.biblegateway.com. You can find the word in the book of Proverbs 31 times. Notice that the word is only used two times in section 1 of Proverbs, chapters 1 to 9, section 2, chapters 10 to 29, and section 3, chapters 30 and 31. Use the word king numerous times because these are specific instructions for God's son, both his literal son that will sit on an earthly throne ruling the world, Luke 1 verse 32, and his son, nation of Israel, who will rule over all the earth as a kingdom of priests. See Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6, Deuteronomy 14 verse 2 and 1 Peter 2 verse 9. Concordance search, find the word labor in the Apostle Paul's letters, Romans through Philemon. While Paul is known as the Apostle of Grace, he speaks of labor more than any other writer in Scripture. Consider each reference of labor to understand that a person saved by grace is expected to labor more than those who were under the law. Note that the word labor is spelled differently in the KJB than our modern spelling.